If you're a designer and you're not sure how to find your first clients, should you use platforms like Upwork and Fiverr to get started with your freelancer? The answer is maybe, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons, and if you're doing this, how to do this the right way. Let's rock and roll. Hey design friends, what is up? My name is Ron Seagal, welcome to Flux. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is the best place on YouTube to learn how to become an amazing designer and make a living as a designer. So make sure you're subscribed and liking this video for more videos on design and freelancing. As I've mentioned today, I wanna talk about Upwork and Fiverr. I get this question all the time, whether we should use these platforms to get clients and how to do this correctly. So first of all, I wanna start off with a disclaimer Although I've freelanced for many years and built a big freelancing business myself, I've actually never used these platforms to find clients. I have, however, used these platforms a lot of times to hire other people to work with. So I'm familiar with the people working there and how these platforms work. And also I know a lot of actually active designers on these platforms making money and making living on these platforms. So this is kind of like a context to where I'm coming from to you know, on this video. So first of all, let's talk about the difference between these platforms and which one of them you should maybe consider. So the difference between them is basically this. Upwork is basically, and I would call it kind of like an open scope freelancing project, right? It's a marketplace where clients come and they post whatever projects they have. They might be very small, they might be huge and very big, very complex. And then freelancers on the other hand, because it's a marketplace, they place bids on these projects. Like I'm willing to do this for X amount of money. The, the clients go through interviews, the different freelancers choose and hire somebody. On Fiverr on the other hand, it's what's called productized services. So in this case, the, the freelancers come first and they're saying basically, I'm willing to do this thing, like this one service, very, very close scope, scope and very clear deliverable. Like I'm willing to do this logo for X amount of dollars. I'm willing to do this, I don't know, social media post for this amount of dollar. Now it started off as, you know, five or five dollar services. Now you can basically name any price and you know, there are higher prices over there. In both of these platforms, there are, I would say kind of like low level freelancers, but also high level freelancers, people who are not charging a lot of money, but people who are charging rather, rather a lot of money on both of them. So now that we understand kind of like the differences between them, in one of them, you know exactly what you're going to do and how much money you're willing to do it for. On the other one, you have to kind of think, rethink about each project and, and kind of name your price every time from scratch. So first of all, why, why use them, right? So the very, very clear thing is because there is traffic there and there are clients there, right? And if you're just starting out, you might not know where to get your first client. And so in that case, it basically solves that problem, right? It puts you in front of potential customers and potential clients and you can bid on these projects. So in a sense, it solves one of the biggest problems that freelancers have, which is, you know, marketing. Like how do I, how do I find clients? That being said, right, there's two things that you need to really understand before you're going down that road. First of all, this, the, both of these platforms are highly, highly competitive, meaning there are a lot of people there, right? You are not the only people in the world, right? The only freelancers in the world looking for work right now. So these platforms, which are again, open for the whole world on the internet are highly, highly competitive. competitive. And that means that kind of the, the, basically that means that when there are a lot of people who are offering more or less the same service that you are offering, that basically kind of puts you in a position where you are in a way a commodity, right? And that leads in a lot of, a lot of time on both these platforms for people to compete on price, right? If I can choose as a client, I now get a hundred bids from a hundred people who can basically do the project, what am I going to uh, choose? based upon, right? So there are, there's a portfolio, which I can see there are reviews, and we're going to get to these in a second. And there is the price. So assuming, you know, two people have good reviews and good portfolios, I'm probably going to pick the one that charges less. And that's human nature. And that's also basically good business, I'm trying to save up money. So what happens on both these platforms is a lot of time, it's going to be a race to the bottom in terms of pricing. And it's not always the case, we're going to talk about that in a second. 
but a lot of times that's the case and that's kind of a danger where you have to be aware of that, right? So if you're going there, especially if you are getting started, it's going to be kind of like a race to the bottom and you can expect to not make a lot of money, all right? Now, as I've mentioned, and again, as somebody who hired there, a lot of people on these platform come looking for actually great people, not juniors, not the cheapest people. We, a lot of times, people are looking to hire high quality people. But then the only way that you have to vet these people is based on the numbers of reviews that they have, let's say five star reviews. And this is true on both platforms. But here's the catch 22, right? If I'm only going to pick somebody who has hundreds of successful reviews and he is proven to do good work, if you're just getting started, there's no way that the good clients who are not only looking for cheap projects, right, who are looking for good people, this is kind of like catch 22. You need the reviews to get the good clients and you're not gonna get the good clients if you don't have the reviews. So you have to start at the bottom. And this is where I want you to understand that like a lot of things, First of all, there is no free lunch and this is kind of like a long-term game. So if you're here for, there's basically, in my opinion, two reasons why you want might want to get started on these platforms. If you are in a place where you don't have access or network to potential clients and you have nothing, then this at least puts you in front of potential people, but you're starting from zero. You're starting from the bottom, competing against millions or, you know, a lot, at least a lot, a lot of, of people, most of them probably already have reviews, so they're a little bit further along, and the only thing that you can probably bid on is price. So it, it's kind of like a slow rise from the bottom. You have to start doing very good work at a low price, start ranking up these reviews, and then slowly, 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 you can maybe raise your prices and so forth. So what is, let's talk about like, what is the end game here? What are we trying to do on these platforms, right? So one thing can be, as I've mentioned, work slowly, build your reviews. And then I know a few people who have such a strong profiles because they have so many reviews and so many, yeah, amazing reviews there that they can now bid on the best projects and they can actually make a lot of money on these platforms or at least very decent money on these platforms. But this, again, is a very long-term game. This is across seven, 10 years of building your profile. This is not at all like fast money, right? So this can be one approach to how your path is going to look like on these platforms. The other thing that is possibility is you're going to do some work for you know, not a lot of money, but instead of trying to build your profile on these platforms, what you're going to do is you're going to take these testimonials or reviews, you're gonna put them on your website, you're gonna take the works that you did on these platforms, you're gonna put them on your own website and using those things, which is basically proof that you can do work and that clients are happy to work with you, now you're going to step out of these platforms and you're gonna start looking for clients elsewhere because now you have the proof that you can already do work and you're in a, in a better position to compete on the, let's call it outside market. Okay, so these I think are two kind of like valid approaches on how to use these platforms and leverage them for long-term success. As I've said, these are, both of them are gonna take time. This is not going to be like an immediate success. Now, one thing I do want you to consider is as I've said, these platforms are very, very competitive, right? You're going to compete with a lot of people, with a lot of talented people. There's, the world is big, right? Now, a lot of times people, can actually have easier competition outside of these platforms, right? You might think, right, I am in this small town in the middle of nowhere, right? Um, and I don't, I don't have clients here, but for this small market of where you are at and the people that you know and that you meet face to face, with these people, with your personal network, you actually have way better advantage right, over somebody that they don't know, that they just find over the internet. So sometimes, although it might be scarier for you or and you might not be into networking, sometimes going and meeting the people that you actually know in real life, in your city, in your area, in your community, and trying to get projects from there 
you can actually have a better advantage, better competitive advantage, because people that know you face to face would rather work with you, right? And a lot of times you can leap forward all of that working through, you know, small crappy projects, charging low prices, because you can find clients who are great clients, not only looking for price, not only bidding for price and work with them directly instead of working, you know, yourself from the bottom. So that's one thing that I want you to keep, um, keep an open mind on. These platforms can be helpful, but it's a long pass grinding it from the bottom. Well, when you're looking outside, if you have a market, if you have a community of people that you can, you know, relate to um, and find projects outside of them, sometimes you can skip forward a little bit faster and build your freelance successfully um, outside of this. I hope you found this helpful in kind of thinking how to get started. If you have any more freelancing questions, make sure you put them in the comments below and we'll try to address them in future videos. Have a fantastic day. Peace out.